Hey everybody, Anthony here and taking a little break from hiking this week. I'm off in uh, Long Island doing uh, some stuff for work and have all my hiking gear with me because I'm going to be heading back uh, to New Hampshire and doing some hiking on the way back. So I was getting my stuff together and I decided I'd shoot a little video on a winter day pack and my gear that I actually clothes that I would wear and, and during a winter day hike. Um, so everything today is going to be associated with day hike. Um, I'm going to go a little more, more detail than I did on my uh, zero degree backpacking. I uh, did one a video a little while ago um, actually out in the field camping and I was freezing so I felt that cut, cut it real short on some of the gear and didn't talk about what I actually wear. <laughs> So um, when I do a day, day hike, I've been using my Osprey Exos. This is their new version. Um, I had the older one and I had the older Exos and I had some issues. One of the things that happened was this kangaroo pocket ripped all up. Um, obviously, snowshoes had nothing to do with that. Um, the side pockets were, you couldn't even put a water bottle in, it'd fall right through. Um, I do a lot of bushwhacking and that's I so you in that mesh used to get caught on everything so anyways I sent it back to be repaired and they are mighty guarantee they actually replaced the pack um, sent me a brand new version um, I actually like it better it, it seems to fit more comfortable and uh, and I like the idea of the pockets and the, that mesh is gone uh, I think it weighs the same too so but anyways this video is not about the pack it's about what's in the pack um, I, I just happen to go with this one as my go-to for my day pack. So anyways, obviously one of the most important things you can have in the wind, White Mountains in the wintertime is snowshoes. I see so many people hiking without snowshoes on. And I don't know how they do it. I am not a fan of snowshoeing, but it is a necessity if you want to hike. Um, I've been using the MSR Ascent lightning there are some flaws in these snowshoes um i won't lie when i bought these i paid 250 dollars for them plus i think i had 20 percent off we got them from rei uh and the price went up shortly after to their 299 now um one of the biggest issues with them and i don't think it'll ever lead into anything is this gets frayed from your binding if you have wide feet. I think it's because you have wide feet. This binding, every time your crampon goes up, it's grabbing right there. Um, MSR will replace them. I think they guarantee them for like a year. REI guarantees them for a year. Um, satisfaction guaranteed. I'm coming up to my year, so I gotta make a decision on whether, what I'm gonna do about them. The other issue, because these are a lightweight snowshoe, I think to gather these snowshoes way five pounds, four and a half pounds. Um, this, these teeth on the side are just worn out. Um, this is a year's use on these, these snowshoes. So, you know, um, this crampon seems to be holding up pretty good though. And the, um, these are actually removable so you could use them as crampons. Don't ask me why I'd want them because these binders are horrible. Um, the, Bindings, when you get these on right, perfect. Your feet will be okay and they'll stay on. If they're a little loose, they fall off. If they're too tight, they cut the circulation off to your feet and your feet freeze. So this has definitely been a learning curve for me. I still haven't quite figured it out yet, um, a year down the road. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Lightweight snowshoe, I throw these on my pack like that and I carry them. Um, yes, it adds some weight, but you gotta have them. So, and, oh, and the best part about you buy any snowshoe for hiking, you want the televators, uh, you know, to pop up. It takes all kinds of strain off your, off your heels and stuff when you're going uphill. So it keeps your foot, you know, your heel only goes back down to there. So anyways, you know, there might be better snowshoes out there. I don't know. That seems to be the, what everybody has. I've had good luck with them other than those couple issues. They work and they're light. So... 
start in the front of the pack. Always have my everything cloth. Wipe and sweat in the summer, wipe and snot in the winter. Uh, so I, I wash this every time I get back. This thing's been washed so many times. My Garmin inReach, you can check out. I just actually shot my um, product review, my review on this. I've had this about six months and I'm just getting around to doing it. Um, my Peak holds my camera right here. Uh, I'm finding in the winter time, this is becoming more troublesome because a lot of moisture is getting on my camera. I had an issue, my uh, camera, I use the Sony a6000, which is not water, t water uh, weather tight or whatever they call it but it seems to be pretty bulletproof. I did drop it in the snow a couple of times the last hike and had a couple of issues. And I, I noticed that my breath breathing down was getting on the screen and freezing. So you gotta be careful, uh, maybe a baggie over it, but this, this thing's awesome. You know, you don't, you, don't, you don't use your camera if you don't have to, you have to dig it out of your pack every time. Now, oh, when I was talking about blabbing about the pack, I didn't mention that they did away with the hip pockets. People, the most complaints they had about the X, old Exos was the hip pockets. So this Osprey's solution was to do away with them. So what I've been doing is I've got two of these. I've got one on the side, one of the side pockets. Keep Nalgene in because you need Nalgene in the winter. Um, I pre it does fit in upside down in this, uh, I don't even know who makes this. I'll put a link on the bottom for the, these and we'll zip up. I boil this one. I will put half boiling water, half room temperature water in, um, electrolyte or whatever in there too. And usually I have a carabiner holding this on the belt. So I slide it back on the belt. Oops like that and the carabiner keeps it from falling off it, you just i just attach it to, to the pack and it'll kind of that only holds it from sliding off the, the off the belt so when you put your pack on it doesn't fall on the ground and you take a pack off it doesn't fall off i do that so i can reach my water with the ospreys you can hook it i have hooked it up on here with a carabiner and then use their pole thing to hook it around but the problem is is my um gregory doesn't have this I love my Gregory pack, by the way, for my overnighters. And I try to keep everything the same so I know where everything is. I don't get used to putting, grabbing my water bottle one time and then this down there the next time. So just my preference. Okay, in the top. Now, I don't have any snacks in here, but normally I would keep my snacks right up inside this pouch right here. I used to carry it in my food bag and I figured out, why am I doing this? I got to dig in through my pack. Food bag always seems to day snacks and it ends up at the bottom. So I dig through my packs so and I just put my snacks in the, in the brain. But I also in here, I keep my, this is the same buff I'd wear during the summer. This is my sat squatch buff. Um, time for to get a new one. I've had this for about a year now. And I wear this because I sweat in, even in the winter and if it's warm out I use a buff it keeps my little bit of warmth on my ears on my head just enough so if it was probably between 30 and 40 degrees I'd be wearing this I also ha carry a um, polar buff they call it it's basically this buff this part of the buff is the same size as any buff but it has this extra piece of, of uh, polar fleece on it I call it or whatever you can use this as a neck warmer you can actually turn I could do a whole video on this is so many I don't remember how to do it you can turn this into a beanie I've actually my last uh, video I wore this as a beanie I don't remember how I did it oh yeah I think I was doing it right but turn it inside out maybe and you twist it and you loop it over <laughs> yeah a little rough on it but and you can wear it as a beanie um, I do this, I wear this too because I can actually make like a, I call it my chimney. So I can make a hole in it and put it on and, and the, the fleece will keep my ears warm, but yet it vents my head a little bit. Um, like I said, neck warmer, face mask, I, the, the endless what you can do with buffs, I love them. Toe warmers, hand warmers. Now. I don't always use these with my hands. I use them with my batteries and my camera. I use them, you can stick them in your, with your water bottle to keep your water a little bit warmer or keep it from freezing. Um, 
whatever. I mean, the possibilities are endless. These are great. I always carry at least uh, one set of each in my pack. And then I usually have, uh, if you watch any of my videos, you see me with those ribs packs. This is where I keep all my camera gear. I keep some toe warmers, hand warmers in here. Um, I'm getting off on a tear here, but keep my Sawyer filter in there because this you don't want it to freeze on a day hike i carry a small amount of water um, as long as i can get water out of the streams i'll carry less water and then filter if i need to but i don't want that to freeze so this this will keep it close to my body by keeping my my ribs and if it's really cold i might stick it in my pocket and then i put my batteries and anything that's temperature sensitive i'll stick in here um, this pack is great really heavy duty worked out good for me a map always have a map most of the hiking trails i'm on i know where they're going been on them uh and i still carry a map every time because every once in a while i want to take a different route or i might have a brain fart or something so i always carry a map i've got um every these are the tyvex ones i have map for every I actually have multiple ones for every area um, i have the paper ones at home hang on the wall so I don't have to pull these out every time. Get a map. So that's all I keep. And then, like I said, I have my snacks and there's some trail mix, some of the, le le uh, the bars I eat. I can't think of what they're called. And emergency bivy I keep under here because this is like my day pack. So I don't keep this in my emergency kit because I don't take it with me when I go on overnighters. I don't need an emergency bivy when I have my zero degree quilts. So that's everything for the brain. I don't have to go through any belt things because I don't have a belt, belt pockets. So in the side pocket, and usually this is secured with the same carabiner that would be holding my water bottle. Hill sound, micro spikes. I know that someone will comment and tell me that the Catulas are better when I make this comment, but I've been, I switched to the Hill sounds they got the strap that goes over your foot that seems to keep them on better. Um, they seem like a more aggressive spike. And I also notice it's, I don't know if it's the way they fit on my boot, but I notice when I'm coming down hill with the Catulas, my heels would slip a lot. And with these, I don't seem to get that heel slippage. I'm, I never compared them to see what the difference is, but I noticed that it's a lot different coming down. Okay, so, and then in the other pocket, another water bottle. I carry at least two of these this one i will take ooh some nasties in that <laughs> to make sure i wash that before i use it um this one i will fill up when i'm coming from my house this will be 100 percent boiling water i have a little electric water boiler or whatever you call it and i will boil um and fill that up with the hottest water i can get don't put the cover on over too tight because you'll never get it off put it on tight enough and I stick that in there upside down, same way. And I stick it in that pocket and actually inside the pack sometimes because I notice it will stay even warmer inside your pack. So if it's a really cold day, you can stick it in your pack, but make sure it's sealed because you do not want that leaking all over your dry clothes. So we go to the inside of the pack. My outdoor research meteor gloves, mittens. These things have kept my hands warm in the 20 negative 20 degree weather um, I don't wear them when I start my hike out because these are my backup they used to be my primary and I use my other ones as backup but I found that if my other ones which are I don't even know what brand they are Dakin I find that well first of all I lost the liners for these second of all I find that if my hands get cold and if my hands were to get wet and cold in these, these don't warm them up. It's that cold. So um, I go in now wearing these, and if my hands get cold, I put these on. So I don't. these don't get as much use as I do anymore unless it's really cold out. So, But I keep those in my pack. My twin to my son, um, Mountain Hardware Micro Fleece. It's got more burn holes from fire campfires in it. I'm surprised it has, it's got airflow now at least. Um, this thing is coming to the end of its life. I don't want to swap it in. I like this. I don't wear this when I'm hiking. Usually it's when I'm stopping unless I'm really got something's gotten wet and cold and then I might hike in this because um, 
this seems to when it gets wet to me doesn't seem to the, the the i don't know i just don't like hiking in this i sweat too much i guess and it gets soaked and wet also another thing i don't hike in unless it's only once um is my patagonia um this is a synthetic down this thing is instant warmth i like putting this on whenever i take a break Whenever I get done hiking or when I'm getting ready to hike, this will be the last thing I'll wear this and I'll stuff it in my pack right before I leave. This, I sweat terribly when, um, when hiking. And I tried using it on a, on a cold day, thinking that it would keep, you know, the tree, the snow on the trees off me. I don't know if it was from sweat or from the trees, but this thing was soaked by the time I was done. So it did not work out. Now, most times, and I don't know where it is, um, might be in my car, I wear a soft shell. It's just some cheap soft shell I got at Goodwill for like 10 bucks. I love it. Uh, I have some issues when I camp with it because it does let out the sweat and will keep the trees, you know, the snow off the trees, off, even a little rain, keep me dry. Uh, but it freezes overnight and will freeze if I take it off and roll it. I get hot and I take it off and I roll it up and stick it in, in like my kangaroo pack. It will freeze while it's in there. So I carry a hard shell just in case um, we do get some freezing rain or if the trees are really bad. I sweat terribly in this. I sweat in everything. Um, it's winter hiking, I like it, but I, I have a harder time regulating body, my body temperature in the winter. Um, so basically I hike in nothing so when you see me out there you can see me a t-shirt you can see me uh, long sleeve I'll actually go over what I wear when I hike winter time still got a poop so toilet paper and sanitizer I don't carry my um do oh geez so deuces uh deuce deuces spade space is spade to do whatever it is <laughs> it's a little shovel I don't carry that um there should be a lighter in here. I must be, I used it when I was camping and I get put back in so I can burn my toilet paper and usually a doggy bag um, that I'll keep in here and then I can pack up my toilet paper too. I'm ill prepared for this hiking trip because I haven't been home. My ditty bag. My, my Sawyer bag and a little cup to scoop just in case. Um, this bag will freeze, so make sure you get as much water out of it as you can. If you use it out in the field and in the cold, you wanna, you know, same thing, get as much water. It tends to be the neck that will freeze, so you wanna make sure you get the water out of that. All right, emergency kit. Keep a Streamlight flashlight in here. Um, I've used Streamlight for years with my uh, weapons lights and this uh, little flashlight works great. It takes two AA batteries. I actually carry one with me every day. This one's falling apart, but I've had it forever. Um, seems to work really good in the woods because you can point it around. If I could find a nice mount, I'd probably use this instead of a regular headlamp. Uh, anyways, uh, I keep headphones Headphones in there. I know, funny thing for your emergency kit, but I like to have headphones when I sleep at night because I like to listen to my music, go to a campsite, a lot of people snoring. I can uh, throw my headphones on. I carry a main pair. This is just my backup, so if I, I forgot them once, I was miserable. Um, keep a wallet with a credit card, uh, expired driver's license, some cash, my hiker safe card, my expired AMC card. I just realized it's expired. Extra batteries, band-aids, um, some stuff that works like Glide. It's individual packs. I found this, I haven't actually used it yet. Um, blue steel, supposedly with tree oil. And I think it, they claim they're vegan, blah, blah, blah. Not really sure, but I haven't tried it yet, but they come in individual packets. So you don't make a mess with uh, carrying a backup of uh, Glide. Oops. Yeah, in the bag there. Yeah. Moles, whoops, mole skins. I haven't actually used them, um, but I lend them out often. Compass, little doggy bag for trash, toilet paper. Um, my drugs, aspirin and Tylenol. I never, I don't think I've ever actually taken this and I've emptied this bag twice. I always give them out to people. I guess you can call me the doctor. Um, I don't keep stuff in here. I've said this before. I don't keep stuff in here I don't know how to use. So basically everything in here I know how to use. 
Uh, so that was everything for my ditty bag. Get down to the clothes bag. Now this is packed for a day hike. Uh, we'll call this my face mask. I have a problem saying that word. Uh, normally there would be goggles in here, but I lent my goggles to my son-in-law when I was uh, Thanksgiving uh, night. He went. He went. Uh, snowboarding after Black Friday. He didn't have any goggles, so I gave them to him, and I don't have any, because he still has them. Um, I gotta borrow a pair or something for this weekend, cause, or buy a pair. Extra socks, these are boot socks, so they go up higher. Um, they're a little bit thicker. I don't know what kind make them thicker, but I have a couple that are thick and a couple that are thin. Um, so here's where the weird stuff comes in. Um, I got base layers. There's a Patagonia base layers. This is actually the medium bottoms. I don't wear them. I've never worn these hiking, so I carry them as, uh, as something to keep me warm. If I need it, extra warmth, I've actually, I don't think I've ever worn these. <laughs> so I think once I got really wet one time breaking trail last winter and I put these on out in the woods. But then I carry the lightweight shirt because I bought the sets. And let's get into what I wear when I hike and I'll explain more. So this is the medium base layer. I actually wear this hiking on my body with, this is what I'm finding working out the best with this shirt. I actually bought the shirt for a wedding. <laughs> I saw it, whoops, it's inside out. It's just an Under Armour college shirt um, I bought this and somebody says, oh, I see you dressed up. I, I go, I did. I bought a shirt with a collar on it. So um, it's a thick, heavy shirt. And so I put, wear it, I put, that, put this base layer on and then I put this over it. And it seems to work. And I hike just in that most times, even when it's close to zero degrees. Um, events, I'm a little cold. Like if I stop, I'd get real cold, but I'm cool while I'm hiking. It's the only way I can seem to regulate my body temperature. That's why I keep my, my puff so I can throw my puff on when I stop. Um, but that seems to be the system that works for me. As Chris Goes Outdoors would say, I recommend none of this. You gotta figure it out on your own, do your own research, but this is what I find works for me. If I wear base layers, which I don't often, um, I wear just the light. Uh, a lot of times I won't wear these. I wore these once this year so far and I had them off within the first 20 minutes of the hike. I, it's, it's a chore taking your snowshoes off, your boots, your pants, and these without ending up in the snow or somebody coming up on you on the trail. So for pants, now I have two sizes. I actually have three pairs of these. These are just North Face. They're 100% nylon, so they don't vent very well, but they are quite waterproof. I have never gotten wet through these. They've looked soaked, but never actually gone through and gotten anything underneath. But they're just uh, North Face, 100% nylon pants. Um, you can get them at Cabela's at the end of the year, um, like the end of summer. Uh, these, I couldn't imagine wearing these in the summer. You would die sweating. Uh, they zip off because a lot of times I, I will zip the, the knees off so I can vent. Uh, like I said, I sweat bad and um, I have a pair of these are mediums. I also have a large pair that I'll wear and the, the idea in the winter was to have a little bit extra air space. Um, I don't find either one any better than the other, to tell you the truth. Uh, these ones are worn out in the butt from butt sliding. <laughs> so uh, they have their own belt, which isn't the greatest, but they they work. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot, they unzip down here, but they will not go over my boots. But this is what I've been going with. I haven't found anything better. These are about a hundred bucks on full price, but you can get them for around 70, 60, 70 bucks when Cabela's puts them on special. I actually should have went over and looked to see if they had them this year. I did, forgot to. Socks, same ones that are in there. They just have a little gray patch. Uh, darn tough, nothing touches my feet but darn tough for socks. I wear darn tough every day. I got them on right now, um, where I'm hiking. Uh, I just lied. Uh, whoop, they fell. <laughs> darn tough doesn't make a sock liner. And I wear a sock liner. So these are uh, smart wool and you buy them by the three packs on Amazon. I put these on first and then the darn tough socks on. Well, the idea is the, if there's any rubbing, it will happen in between the two socks. I've never had a blister. 
So either these work or I just don't get blisters. I'm not really sure. I've always worn them and I never dared not to. So I always wear those. Um, for a hat, an REI fleece hat. I think it was like 10 bucks. I bought me and my son one and uh, I've had it ever since. And it's falling apart a year and a half later. But whatever, I'll keep hiking till it falls apart. I don't wear it. Well, I say I, I guess I wear it quite a bit. Um, but anyways, it's a hat. What do you say about a hat? So that's what I got for the hat. And what else we got? Oh, so I also wear Outdoor Research Gators. I have two pairs of these. I actually wear these in the summertime for bushwhacking because I seem to get all my cuts below my knees and I wear shorts. So I wear these. They keep the heat in around the top of your boot, it seems like. Um, just make sure you put them on right because if not you sometimes trip over the strap this goes on the outside and they just velcro up um, I've had very good luck with these I think outdoor research guarantees them my other pair are ripped but I only wear them like I said bushwhacking and they're not really I don't think they're really intended for that they're really for snow um, I've had my foot go in through two rivers on one hike uh, and right up to the top towards the top of the gate I as long as you pull it out fast, this will keep water out of your boot. Don't ask me how. It doesn't make sense, but it, it works. I know firsthand. Um, Third River, I had my buddy go first because I had fallen through every one we crossed so far. Um, for footwear, this varies a little bit. I've got these uninsulated oboes. Um, these are the, um, I think, the Behringer or something like that. And these, like I said, these are not insulated. This is my idea for this was, these are my three season boots. Now I wear ultra trail runners up until I start seeing snow at the trailhead. I'll even wear them in the snow if there's snow at the summits. It, it doesn't seem to bother me. It's a little annoying when you just get your foot in there, but once they, they dry out um, and I keep going, not a big deal. Now I've, seen people have hiked with people that had trail runners on when there was snow consistently on the way up and they don't make usually make it trail runners are not designed for snow hiking i wish they were but they're not um the oboes wearing the ultras because they got the wide toe box the, the oboes seem to work the best i wear these maybe one hike in the spring one hike in the fall i i don't usually when you can switch to, which switch to uninsulated boots I'm switching to trail runners. There might be a little bit of snow, you know, you know the monorail still on the trail, but I, I still got these. Um, they're not as comfortable as the Winter Twin. I think they're same name. Um, these are the Oboes 250 grain in insulation or whatever they are. Um, I'll put a link on the bottom, but I'm almost positive they're called Behringers or something like that. Or, so that's with a B. Um, these I wear all winter long. I get typical cold foot going up. Um, always warm up on the way down. Uh, they, they do make a 450. I was thinking about trying for January, but I don't necessarily have cold feet. But for camping, I was thinking they might be better for camping. And these are a lot more comfortable in those three seasons. So a lot of times, if it's kind of borderline between do I need those three seasons or these I wear these just because they're more comfortable and my feet don't seem to sweat they seem to just they sweat about probably as much as they would be in those ones so I, I do prefer these but I was thinking about getting the 450s for when I do overnighters so I have that little extra warmth when I'm hanging out in camp um, these have been great this is actually my second pair because the first pair they told me to buy uh, an next size up and it didn't work you want to get them, you know, just the right size, not the next size up stuff. And last, well, almost last, trekking poles with winter baskets. Uh, I buy these on Amazon for 22 bucks. I love these. They are not the lightest, but the I, and I do the aluminum because I break carbon fiber like there's no tomorrow and they're double the cost and they last me one hike. I've tried hiking poles from $15 up to $120 and they're no better than these $22 um, I do recommend if you ever buy cheap hiking poles if you're not buying Cascade Mountain and I don't know maybe they have them too you want these these latch the ones that flip they don't want the 
ones that twist they give out uh, these when you buy come with like a little nice case doesn't doesn't fit with the, uh, the winter baskets you get the different things I use them till they fall apart I haven't tried re-tipping these yet I usually when the tips are totally gone I just buy a new pair for $22 and I save the old one so if I break break a pole I can just replace the part last truly last I guess other than my camp glove that I only have one I wear these in camp and when it's kind of warm and I need something in my hand you can see I melted them all to crap with the fire my ribs bag love this bag I'm actually thinking about getting the next size up they have a bigger one um, I can keep all my I think I showed this at the beginning I had a couple of camera overheating heating so this has been a long long process water filter in here some hand warmers um, I keep my batteries for my camera my camera in here uh, my GoPro my tripods this is where I keep my my uh, headphones are on the table over there and uh, I'll keep my spot I'll throw my knife nice spot I still call it a spot my in reach in here when I, I'm gonna go you know drop I drop my pack a lot I'll throw my in reach in this pocket and I, I leave this on the only time I take it off is when I'm shedding or adding a layer and a lot of times I'll wear it underneath my jacket this underneath my jacket to keep the extra warmth on the batteries a lot of work filming hikes so anyways that is just about it that I can think of the only thing I might add is a saw um, a lot of times if I know a trail's got some blown down blow downs on it I'll bring my saw and I'll cut my way in not so much in the winter time just because um, the way I hike I get to keep moving all the time and uh, I might slack and I see something that fell out of my ditty bag that I go through you guys are all thinking what about all the night times I come out of the woods at night um, my black diamond I think this is like the sport um, this one locks as you can see by the blue light blinking so it won't turn on you have to actually hold it it's probably gonna turn on red no nope. so now it'll turn on and if you it's got all kinds of different stuff I hold it down as strobes I don't know how to use any of this stuff either I plan on doing a review on this but I'd have to actually read the directions okay so you hold it down and it will go to lock. Never had to change the batteries in it since I've had it. Here's my little thing of glide. I didn't realize those were in the bottom of my ditty bag. I keep what is going on here. I keep the the light my ditty bag now because that pack doesn't have a belt pocket. And also when I switch bags, I always I would forget my light. So now when it's in the ditty bag, I just take this ditty bag in and put in another another uh, pack, and I'm good to go. I got everything. So that is it. That is what I would take out on a negative 20 degree day or a 40 degree day. Um, I, like I said, I'm not recommending. This is what you need. This is what works for me. Uh, I'm not saying that if I, if I got hurt on the trail that I'm gonna have a cold one. I see people carry pads and sleeping bags and tarps and all that stuff and that works for them this is what works for me you know um, most times in the winter I always hike with someone I sometimes hike solo I might pack a couple extra things but that is basically what I've gotten my pack down to um, if I was going maybe up on the prezzies I might pack a couple extra layers and I have another pair I have a pair of running running pants uh, that I might throw in there that I know I could throw on that's when my large pant northern face pants would come in and I could put that extra layer on I've never needed that the only time I'd ever get cold is if I was not moving and I don't not move unless I'm hurt <laughs> I guess <laughs> so anyways um, could be playing with fate but you do what works for you and what makes you feel comfortable I just want to just go over what I wear and what I do and this works great for me so anyways Hope to see you guys all on the trail. Don't forget to hit that like button at the bottom. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. Um, I, it makes me fall warm and fuzzy inside when people like my videos, I, I know. Um, also, you can find me on Facebook, um, Instagram. Uh, I don't post a lot of pictures on Instagram. I try to post quality on Instagram. 
and a lot of times just selfies. So anyways, see you out on the trail. This is Anthony.